What's up, Daddy? What you watching? All right, what's up, man? Right now, I'm just watching our church's live stream. Oh, nice. Where do I find that? Oh, well, it's easy. All you have to do is go to the church's live stream on Facebook and leave a like. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is David. And I'm Ben. And we're here to let you know that every Wednesday night at 7 p.m., the Bridge Youth Group will be right here. We're going to be meeting for music, preaching, and fellowship right here. Always a great time with great teachings there, a great way for our youth group to get to fellowship with each other. Make sure you're there. But where? to the Cody's I just have a little word for y'all um, so most of the time when you think of worshiping you think of the songs that we sing typically right and that is a beautiful act of worship don't get me wrong but another act of worship that I wanted to um, talk to you about tonight is just simply letting go letting go and letting him because once you do that that's when you taste the goodness of God. Let go. Let go of the hurt. Let go of our will. Let go of the things that our heart desires. And let Him fulfill those things. Not what we want. Because our flesh will fail us every single time. So, in order to do that, get come to the altar. Get out of your comfort zone and surrender to the Lord. Just simply surrender. Lift your arms. And I challenge each and every one of you that do not come to the altar to get up and come and get out of your comfort zone. I promise you won't regret it. And one thing that I love about the Lord is that once you do these things and you get the taste and the goodness of God, um, it's just so good and your life changes completely forever. The people around you you, your life, everything completely changes. But some people, 
they want a taste for something else. They want to go off, get a little taste of something else. But what I love about God is he says, come back. Just get a taste again. Just come get another taste. Because I'm still good. I'm still faithful. I still love you. I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at you. I'm still going to love you through what you've done. That's why he got on that cross. That's why he died on that cross. His blood shed for us. Because he loves us so, so much. And that's why. So just come get a taste. Just come get a taste of the goodness of God. Because it is so, so good and it's so worth it. Amen. Let's stand up and worship the Lord tonight. Father, you are worthy of all the praise. Lord, you deserve it, and there's no one like you. Lord, I pray that we would, we would hear and understand your voice tonight, Lord, that we would worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, help us to hear from your word tonight, Lord. Let us leave here forever changed because of the power of your love, Lord. And it's in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Can we just start with giving the Lord a hand clap and a shout of praise tonight? Oh, come on. Do you know what day it is? It's Wednesday. It's the gathering of the saints day. And I'm excited for what the Lord has in store for tonight. Amen. Amen. Let's worship. Give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise. 
verse that we, we commonly, we, we quote a lot, and it's Jesus, uh, and it's so timely to the season we're at right now, it's, it's when Jesus is standing at the well, um, uh, talking to the lady at the well, talking to the Samaritan lady, and uh, I want you to pay a quick attention real quick to their conversation. She asked him, she says, why is Jerusalem the only holy place? Why is Jerusalem the only place where we can worship? She says, my ancestors used to worship on the mountain, and he said, uh, he said, he said don't worry about that. He said, very soon, actually the time is now, that we're going to be able to worship the Father in both spirit and in truth. And, and then uh, she says, oh yeah, yeah, I know uh, the Messiah is coming and he's going to give us all the answers. Listen to what he said. And he says back to her, he says, you don't know very much about the God that you worship. Or can I say it like this? You don't have much truth about the God that you're worshiping. And he repeats himself and he says again, but very soon you're going to be able to worship him with spirit and in truth. And most of us here know, you know, when you accept God and you accept Jesus as your Savior, your spirit comes to live within you so we can worship him in spirit. But I feel like sometimes we don't really know what does it mean to worship him in truth. If you go a little bit further in John, another verse that we quote a lot of the time, especially around this time of the year, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If we, 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 he said, I'm the truth. And we come and look at the Bible as the truth, all the way from Genesis to the New Testament. But it's all pointing to Jesus. It's all forecasts. It's all foreshadows. It's all, it's all metaphors and similes pointing at Jesus. And not only is it pointing to Jesus, pointing to what, he did, what he's going to do on the cross. So what changed? Why did he say you don't know the God that you worship? It was him going to the cross in order to be able to worship him in truth. You better get this. To worship in truth, you've got to have a revelation of who Jesus is and of what he did on the cross. Why do you think one of the last things that Jesus said to the disciples before he went, he said, I know what they say. I know what the world says about me. I know what the church calls me. He asked you, he said, who do you say I am? And I just feel like right now as we continue to worship can we worship in the spirit and in truth? Because we've got a revelation. Do you have a person? If the church was gone tomorrow and the preachers were gone tomorrow and we couldn't gather and there's no more evangelists, do you have that relationship in yourself where I can worship him in spirit? And I know I got a revelation for myself. Not because the pastor told me or because my mama told me or my dad told me. I've got a revelation for myself of who Jesus is. And I have the ability, thank God, that I can worship him in spirit <laughs> and with the truth of the revelation of who Jesus is. Let's worship him in spirit and in truth. There's a name that levels my heart It comes up high and through the sea I see its power and rival by Run of me, yes I am. There's a faith that stands defiant. It sends Goliath to his knees. I've seen his praise unrivaled shine. Right off my feet yeah. Cause 
See, he's never changed. You still do. You still do miracles. You will do what you said. For you're the same God now as you've always been. You're the same God. You're the same God. You're the same God now as you've always been. You're the same God. You're the same God. You're the same God now as you always been. You're the same God. You're the same God. You're the same God now as you are. You're the same God. You're the same God. You're the same God now as you always been. You're the same God. You're the same God. You're the same God now as you always been. You're the same God. You're the same. power that that name has that's the power that i claim it's the same that wrote the grave there's no power like the mighty name of jesus there's no power like the mighty name of jesus there's no power like the mighty name of one more part I want to see. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the the name of Jesus, 
I wish somebody would give a shout of praise in this place. Come on, let's lift him up. Come on in this house. Come on. Before we go back to our seat, we're not leaving until we lift him up and give him praise. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, let's lift him up and give him our best right now. Somebody cry out in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I walked in. I walked in prayer meeting Monday night just making it here, rushing here to get here. And literally when I walked to the back doors, I felt this freedom that was in the house. I, I was just like, man, I, I love I love prayer meeting. I love what they do. And I, I know they have been battling in the spirit. I know they've been fighting in the spirit and they've been calling specific things out that they've been feeling and fighting. But when I walked in Monday night, there was a complete freedom in the house, complete breakthrough and come up here and just sit down in the seat, man, and you just feel God just pouring out. And uh, by all means, right, this is what I feel. I feel like the heavens were rent open. I felt like the heavens were rent open. I just feel like God can do anything tonight. Y'all ain't hearing me tonight. Y'all don't need nothing tonight. Hey Amen. Y'all all good and everything's great. Does anybody in the house, did you come with a need tonight and you say, I need Jesus. Amen. Right now in my life. Amen. I came to tell you there's nothing holding back. There's no hindrances here in this house tonight. The heavens are rent and they're open. I know Pastor Philip said a while ago, he said, I, he said, man, something about your house. He said that this, this worship, this place of worship, he said, it's just an open heaven in this house. It's just an open heaven. Who believes that it's just an open heaven? Amen. The heavens are open for you. Amen. And listen, we're not going to hold back tonight. We're fixing to move on with the service. We're not going to hold back. We're going to allow God to do some amazing things tonight. Just go ahead and get ready for it. Amen. Go ahead and get all of your, your pride out of the way. Go ahead and get whatever you need in repentance. Go ahead and get it out of the way. Get all that stuff out of your heart, out of your head. And just say, God, here I am completely like Maddie said at the very front. She said, all you got to do is just let go. 
All you got to do is surrender. What are you holding on to tonight? Hey, let go of it. Whenever you get on the other side of this, you're going to ask yourself this one question. Why did I ever doubt God in the first place? Oh, y'all ain't hearing me tonight. Won't you just turn to somebody and love on them right now? Can you do that while you're making your way back to your seat? Turn to them and love on them. Tell them how good it is to see them here on a Wednesday night. Ask them, say, did you come expecting? Amen. Did you come expecting? Amen, 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 amen. Amen. Before we get into the rest of the service, we're going to uh, give tonight. We're going to plant some seeds here, seed offerings. Amen. We love to give in this house. It's a part of worship. It's a part of that letting go. Amen. It's a part of that letting go. We have a, we can see out here that there's work going forward. Amen. There's some things happening this week, getting us ready to, uh, for planning and everything like that and what we're going to do with the stage. Hey, listen, hopefully, hopefully not too long from now, I don't know what a time frame, but I can tell you within the year, if not within six months, that you'll see a, a new stage. You're going to see more. Watch this right here. You're going, to, you're going to see more seats and you're going to see more room. Amen. We're going to have a new building in the back as well. Amen. There's going to be some good things going in here. A place for young people. A place to do things. Amen. We're excited about all of it. So, uh, amen. Also, just say this. After you get through giving tonight, um, young people, preteens, we want you to stay out tonight because we want you to be a part of the service. So don't go upstairs. Stay out here with us. Amen. And be a part of this. Amen. Would you stand with me? This is the way that we give. Amen. This is our culture of giving. Amen. And I want you to lift. Whether you're giving on your phone, I'm going to give it on my phone tonight. If you got whatever you're getting your seat off and whatever's in your hand, I want you to lift it high. And I want you to declare what this seed m means to you. As a sower, we've got to know what we're sowing. It makes no sense to not know what you're sowing. Whatever you sow, that will you reap also. Come on, somebody. We, we, don't, we don't sow certain seeds and just walk and look for something else. If you sow into deliverance, I believe you'll reap in deliverance. Sow in healing, reap in healing. The question is, is what do you have need of? I want you to lift it high and I want you to declare. Lord, I declare a hundredfold. Amen. Not just for myself, but to bless those around me. Amen. That's what our prayer in this has. I want you to listen to the bridge prayer right now. And I want you to listen to the heartbeat of this church. And what it says. It says this right here. It says, Lord, you give seed to the sower. That's what your word says. Amen. So that means you've entrusted me to be able to sow. Why? Because you know I'll not take your blessings in your overflow and put it in the storage. There was a man in the Bible that did that and you cursed it. But Lord, I want to be, this church wants to be a distribution of your blessings. Why? Because we do not give to get. That would be the gospel of prosperity. But we give to give. That is the kingdom. Your word says, when we give, it shall be given unto us in good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto us. Lord, our prayer in this house is that you bless men to bless us. But sooner than later, Lord, turn that around and bless us to bless men. Allow our overflow to become somebody else's blessing. And since we pray that, we're not declaring the 30 or 60-fold return. But biblically, we declare the 100-fold. Somebody say, in Jesus' name. Once you step out from where you are, once you walk up here and just plant and declare it, say, I declare the 100-fold. Amen. The generational blessing. In Jesus' name. If you need them to serve you on your way back, just lift your hand up and they'll serve you on the way back. Amen. What a, what a special night tonight. Uh, special more than one way. It's just being able to have the Cody's here. 
uh, singing for us and, and leading worship and, uh, and then having uh, Pastor Cody right here coming and being a part, amen, of uh, what's happening, amen, uh, Caleb's dead, amen. We're just so happy to have, have you here, have you and your family here, the whole family. Amen. Have you here to be a part of this? And I know it's special for you guys, but we, he almost got cut loose last time he was here. Amen. And so it was like, you know what? We got to get, we got to get Pastor Philip Cody to come down and, and preach to us and just give him the Wednesday night. Let him see what, let him see what's on his heart. I know he's got something. I'm excited about it. So let's welcome, amen, Pastor Philip Cody as he comes right now to preach to us. Amen. Wow, what an honor it is to be in the house of the Lord tonight. It's a Cody invasion on Wednesday night at the bridge. So thankful to have my family with me tonight. It's good to have my mom and sister with us tonight. And uh, I just thank God for this opportunity. I want to honor Bishop Rich tonight for the many seeds that he has sowed into this house. I've just got to meet him and the spirit of Christ that dwells in him bears witness with my spirit. Bishop, I honor you tonight. The years of, I get emotional when I get to talking about ministers. For the years of service that you have sowed into the kingdom of God. I'm honored to know you, my brother. To the pastor of this house, Brother Jason, my brother from another mother, this house is blessed to have this man of God serving as your pastor. You, you pat a cake and with me. You, I said you're pat a cake and with me. You are blessed to have this man serve as your pastor they're not on every block you can't find them anywhere he's made an impact in my life in a very short period of time pastor I honor you and I thank you for the work that you're doing and what you're going to continue to do my spirit is just uh, overflowing tonight I told Pastor Jason out in the foyer that every time I've been here, every time I've been here, there's been an open heaven in this house. I feel it. I sense it. I experience it every time. And I know that the blessings of the Lord are upon this house. If you would turn with me to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, beginning with verse 14. While you're turning there, I want to share something with you. It's about our English language. There's a two-letter word that perhaps has more meaning than any other two-lettered word, and that is the word up. It's easy to understand this word up. It means towards the sky or at the top of the list. But when we awaken in the morning, why do we wake up? At a meeting, why does a topic come up? Why do we speak up and why are the officers up for election and why is it up to the secretary to write up a report? We call up our friends. We use it to brighten up a room, polish up the silver. We warm up the leftovers and we clean up the kitchen. We lock up the house Some guys fix up the old car. At other times, a little word has real special meaning. People stir up trouble, line up for tickets, work up an appetite, and think up excuses. To be dressed is one thing, but to be dressed up, ah, that's special. Y'all getting this? A drain must be opened up because it is stopped 
up. We open up a store in the morning, but we close it up at night. We seem to be pretty mixed up about up. To be knowledge about the proper uses of up, look up the word up in the dictionary. In a desk-sized dictionary, it takes up almost one-fourth of the page and can add up to about 30 definitions. If you are up to it, you might try building up a list of the many ways up is used. It will take up a lot of your time, but if you don't give up, you may wind up with a hundred or more. When it threatens to rain, we say it is clouding up. When the sun comes out, we are saying it is clearing up. When it rains, it wets the earth and often messes things up. When it doesn't rain for a while, things dry up. Well, I guess I could go on and on, but I'll wrap it up for now. My time is up, and I believe I'll just shut up. You got to love the English language. Look over at your neighbor and say, neighbor, come on, tell them, neighbor, this word, this word tonight is for you. Let's stand for the reading of the word tonight. It's already been conformed. Confirm two or three people tonight. The young lady who started tonight has got all over my sermon. My brother that got up here a while ago, I know his name and can't think of it right now. He got all over my sermon. So um, we're, we're going we're, we're to get into the word of the Lord. I came by tonight to ask the bridge a question. Can the church still wow the world Today, a few of you believe it. Hopefully, the rest of you believe it when we leave here tonight. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. Very familiar passage of Scripture. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Lift your hands towards heaven and ask God's anointing to flow in this house tonight. Father, we have assembled ourselves in your name. We have lifted up you in worship and in praise. And now, God, we ask that the anointing of the Holy Ghost would come upon us, that we would declare the good news of the gospel. Open our ears that we may hear, our hearts that we may receive. God, do something in us and through us tonight that we'll never forget as long as we live. Father, we thank you for the victory that we have in Jesus. And Lord, we'll give you praise and glory because it belongs to you and no one else. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. In this fifth chapter, Jesus is preaching his famous sermon on the mountain that gives us encouragement, direction, And it challenges us to be the light of the world. I think you use the wow factor. The word wow means great success or explanation of astonishment. And so I go back to my question today. Can the the church still wow the world in the 21st century? I want to give the world a little bit of credit tonight because they've been very good at entertaining us and keeping us away from the presence of God. I'll have to tell you they've got all the bells and whistles. They have all the toys. They have all the lights. They have all the music. They have all the superstars. But i tell you what they don't have. They don't have the real peace. They don't have the real joy, and they don't have the real power, and they don't have the real anointing. Somebody said, well, 
preacher, I, I, I don't like going to church because church is boring. May I submit to you, maybe you haven't been in the right church. Maybe you've been in a church that's been dead so long that they don't know they're dead. I found out that dead churches don't realize they're dead. But I've been in lively churches, and if I'm going to choose between a dead church and a lively church, I'm going to go to a lively church because I know there's something moving in a lively church. I know there's something powerful happening in a lively church. I believe that the church today can still wow the world. There's one thing that we have that the world doesn't have and the church has the presence of God. Can I submit to you today, ladies and gentlemen, there is nothing that can compare in this world to the presence of God that manifests himself in the church. Can I tell you there is nothing. Somebody shout nothing. Somebody shout nothing. The word nothing means non-existent, zero or not. When God is in his house, when God's presence is moving in his house, anything is possible to them that believe. That's why I say if you want to see something, feel something, or know something, why don't you get yourself in a house of God where the anointing of God is flowing, where the power of his spirit is moving because I'm telling you tonight if God is here and I believe that he is here I believe with my faith and my expectation that if God is here anything is possible to them that will believe I'm taking the limits off of God I'm taking the limits off of God and I'm going to let him be God in this house tonight I want to break down the word wow if I can tonight. The W means willingness. Means prompt to act or respond or favorably. You've heard this said by a lot of preachers before. You can lead the horse to the water hole, but you can't make him drink. He'll have to drink from himself. Now that principle is not only for the horse, but it's for you. You're going to have to learn to drink for yourself. Now, in order to be blessed of the Lord, you're going to have to do something. God's not going to bring it to you on a silver platter and make it very easy for you. Everything that I read in the Word, if you get, if you get something from the Lord, action is required. Look at Hebrews 10, 6 and 7. In burnt offerings and sacrifice for sin, you have no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come in the volume of the book. It is written to me to do your will, O God. In Matthew 16 and 24, then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Action is required. In Matthew 11 and 28, Jesus said, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Let Ladies and gentlemen, what I read between the scripture there, God says, if you will move, I will move. God said, if you'll make the first step of faith, God said, I'll take another step of faith with you. I want to tell you, you're going to have to, oh, I felt a streak of glory. You're going to have to quit waiting on your neighbor to do something. You're going to have to quit waiting on somebody else to do something that you can do for yourself. God said, if you move, I'm going to move. And so I just believe that God is waiting on somebody at the bridge on a Wednesday night of March. God said, I'm waiting for somebody to take a step of faith. I'm waiting for somebody to lift their hands. I'm waiting for somebody that will cry out a little bit louder. And when you do, God said, I'll take a step out of glory and I'll land down in Mississippi and something will change when I move by my power. Woo! I love the story in 1 Kings chapter 10. Let me read it to you. 
Now when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to test him with hard questions. She came to Jerusalem with a very great retinue with camels that bore spices, very much gold, precious stones. And when she came to Solomon, she spoke with him about all that was in her heart. So Solomon answered all of her questions. There was nothing so difficult for the king that he could not explain it to her. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the food on his table, the seating of his servants, the service of his waiters and their apparel, his cupbearers and his entryway by which he went up to the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. Then she said to the king, it was of a true report which I heard in my own land about your words and your wisdom. However, I did not believe the words until I came and saw with my own eyes. And indeed, the half was not told me. Your wisdom and prosperity exceed the fame of which I heard. Happy are your men and happy are these your servants who stand continually before you and hear your wisdom. Blessed is the Lord your God who delighted in you, setting you on the throne of Israel. Because the Lord has loved Israel forever, therefore he made you king to do justice and righteousness. Then she gave the king 120 talents of gold, species in great quantity and precious stones. There never again came such abundance of spices as the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Verse 13, now King Solomon gave the queen of Sheba all she desired, whatever she asked besides what Solomon had given her according to the royal generosity. So she turned and went to her own country, she and her servants. The queen of Sheba came to Solomon to hear his wisdom, thereby to improve her own. Solomon's wisdom made more impression on the queen of Sheba than all of his prosperity. There is a spiritual excellence in heavenly things and consistent Christians to which no reports can do justice. Here the truth are exceeded all who are brought through grace to commune with God and we will all say that the half was not told of them of the pleasures and the advantages of wisdom's ways. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9 says this, but as it is written, I have have not seen, nor ear heard, nor hath it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you that the preacher could not tell me how good and how great and how awesome was until I taste and seen that the Lord was good for myself. I heard the worshipers worshiping, but I didn't know how good it was until I got in the spirit of worship myself I looked around at people who were in the house of God and how they were blessed and how they were happy and how they were contented I did not know what they knew until Christ became the Lord of my life and the light came on and when the light came on I started lighting up I started letting the world know that he lives and he lives in me somebody ought to praise him for the power of God oh Lord have mercy she pronounced them happy that, that constantly attended unto Solomon with much more reason may we say of Christ's servants we are blessed to be dwelling in the house of the Lord. And we are blessed when we praise him. She made a noble present to Solomon. What we present to Christ he needs not. But he will have us to do so to express our gratitude. The believer who has been with Jesus. Will return to his station. Discharge his duties with readiness and from better motives, looking forward to the day when being absent from the body, he shall be present with the Lord. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the choice tonight is ours to make. Listen to me. It's not the devil ain't got no say in this. The choice is ours to make. Listen to Isaiah 1, 19 and 20. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. This is not E.F. Hutton talking. This is God talking. God said, if you are willing, you shall eat the good of the land. I don't know about you, but whatever he asks of me, I'm going to submit to it. Whatever he commands me to do, I'm going to obey it. We're not going to take a vote. We're not going to pick up the phone and say, what do you think about this? If God asks of us, we we will do it. Second of all is the O. Stands for overflow. To flow over. To feel to full. Over the edge. Excess. Superabundance of surplus. I love the story in Joshua chapter 3 verse 14. Israel is crossing the Jordan River at flood stage. At flood stage. Hear the word of the Lord. So it was when the people set out from their camp to cross over Jordan with the priests bearing the ark of the covenant before the people. And as those who bore the ark came to the Jordan and the feet of the priest who bore the ark dipped in the edge of the water, for the Jordan overflows its banks during the whole, whole time of harvest, that the waters which came down from upstream stood still and rose in a heap very far away from at Adam, the city that is beside Zartan. So the waters that went down into the sea of Arahat, the salty sea, failed and were cut off, and the people crossed over opposite Jericho. Then the priest who bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan. All Israel crossed over on dry ground until all the people had crossed completely over the Jordan. That was in the physical, but a spiritual was about to take place. Joel chapter to 2 23 and be glad then you children of Zion and rejoice in the Lord your God for he has given you the former rain faithfully he will cause the rain to come down for you the former rain and the latter rain in the first month the fresh and floor shall be full of wheat and the bat shall overflow with new oil and wine so I will restore unto you the years that the swarming locust has eaten the crawling locust the consuming locust the chewing locust my great army which I sent among you you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be put to shame. Then you will know that I am the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God and there is no other. My people shall never be put to shame. I love verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy and you old men shall dream dreams and your young men men shall see visions and also on my men servants and maiden servants I will pour out my spirit in those days and I'll show wonders in the heavens and the earth blood and fire and pillars of smoke and the sun shall be turned into darkness the moon into blood before the coming great day of the awesome day of the Lord and it shall come to pass that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved for in Mount Zion and Jerusalem there shall be deliverance as the Lord has said among the remnant whom the Lord calls and it happened on the day of Pentecost they were in an upper room they had been praying like y'all been praying but 120 people got a sound from heaven 120 people got royal messed up that day and they came out with power and they came out full of the spirit and they came out testifying and they came out witnessing and they came out speaking in other tongues and God had poured out his spirit like he said he would pour it out. I would to God there'd be an overflow at the bridge on Wednesday night. Yeah. 
Lord have mercy. Come on back up here, singers and musicians, get ready. The world looked at them and they said, You're drunk. And Peter didn't turn and run and hide, cuss and swear. Hello. He stood up in boldness. We are not drunk as ye suppose, but this is that that was spoken by the prophet Joah. In the last days, saith God, I will, I love it, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. I said on all flesh. I said on all flesh. If you don't want none, just go ahead and stay away. I'll take what you don't want. I found out that the more I get, the more I want. I found out a little bit's not enough. I found out that the spirit of God will give you more than you have than you have the ability to contain. It's an overflow, ladies and gentlemen. It's not a little summer afternoon rain. It's a gully wash from heaven. It's a hope in heaven that pours out his spirit and he will give you the Holy Ghost if you'll ask him. Last W is for worship. Worship is the expression of a relationship between believers and God. It involves reverence and adoration to God. Worship can be a devotion to false God. Pastor, I wish we could get to the place in the church that we would quit worrying about everybody else. Here's what I found out. You can't worship God looking at your neighbor, worrying about your neighbor, waiting on your neighbor. Let me drop a little bomb on you. This ain't about your neighbor. Worship has never been about your neighbor. Worship is personal. Worship is personal. And I love it. Jesus had the conversation at the woman at the well in John chapter 4. God is looking for people. I said, God is looking for people who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. Can can I dig just a little bit here, Pastor? Really, to worship, you've got to get past the symbols that it relates to and that reminds us of past revivals and past services. That worship gets us to a place of an open vision of God that is real. That we have the knowledge in worship. Whether we see him, feel him, do not feel him, do not see him. But we know that he is here. And if he is here, he is listening and waiting to take action on your behalf. Worship was commanded in 1 Chronicles 16, 28, and 29. Give to the Lord, O families of the people. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering come before him. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Psalm 66, 1 through 5. Make a joyful shout to God all the earth. Sing out the honor of his name and make his praise glorious. Say to God how awesome are your works. Through the greatness of your power, your enemies shall submit themselves to you. All the earth shall worship you and sing praises to you they shall sing praises to your name come and see the works of God he is awesome in his doing towards the sons of men can I go a little bit further Psalms 95 verses 1 through 6 oh come let us sing to the Lord let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation let us come before his presence with thanksgiving let us shout joyfully to him with psalms for the Lord is 
is a great God and a great king above all gods. His hands are the deep places of the earth and the height of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands formed the dry land. Oh come let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. In Matthew chapter 8 verse 1. And when he had come down from the mountain great multitudes followed him. And behold a leper came and worshipped him saying Lord if you are willing you can make me clean. Jesus put his hand out and touched him and said I am willing be cleansed and immediately the leprosy was cleansed. Can I tell you your worship can change your life, change your circumstances. Your worship can touch the heart of God on a Wednesday night and things can change quickly. So I gotta ask, I gotta answer the question. I believe that the church can still wow the world if we are willing, if we will receive the overflow, and if we will worship God will do a work in us. What are you waiting on? Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Clap your hands. Worship the God of your salvation. Come on, church. Come on, church. Lift up your holy hands. Lift up your holy hands. How the abundance of your heart. Let your mouth speak. Let your mouth speak. No
Lord Jesus. Come and build your church. It's a dangerous prayer, but would you lift up your hands and say, God, I want a wow moment in my life right now. Come on, lift up your hands. God, I want a wow moment. So that I won't have enough words in the English to describe on Thursday morning what you did for me on Wednesday night. God, I need a wow moment right now that when I was in the house of the Lord, God came by where I was standing. I, I need a wow moment. I, I know that nobody touches me the way that he touches me. I, I know that nobody speaks to me the way that God speaks to me. I, I, I know that it's real. I, I, I know that my salvation is real. I, I know where he brought me from. I, I know where he's carried me. I, I know that I'm his daughter. I, I know that I'm his son. I, I know the apple of his eye he's got me in the palm of his hand I, I, I can't help but praise him I, I can't help but praise him come here lift your hands oh my God Whew. make it sweeter than the honeycomb in the honeycomb sweet. Father, in the name of Jesus, let his worship. He spoke about it before service ever began. Now, God, let the worship return to his spirit, man. Let the spirit of the living Christ, the anointed Christ, rest upon him, Father. Who breathe upon him the power that he needs that he desires. Lord, give him the answer of his prayer. Holy Ghost, light him up from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. Let the fire, let the fire. Build your church, build your church, build it from the ground up. Is your church? Here's some good news. Build your church, build your church. As the redeemed, we're on our way to heaven. that the enemy will fight you in is your worship because if he can get you quiet long enough he'll get you isolated and you'll forget about the blessings of God and you'll forget about the miracles of God and you'll do like the children of Israel did you'll put your harp in a willow tree and you'll quit singing the praises of your God but if you can ever remember who he is 
if you can remember what he's done if you can remember what his power has done in your life you will praise him in the morning you'll praise him in the noonday you'll praise him in the evening all day long I can't help but bless his name I want to submit to you great is our God great is our to it again Jesus said you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden there is something greater on the inside of you than what's on the outside of you there is the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ there is the power of his word and of his spirit that lights you up every day you live. I believe it'll be all right. You brethren, grab a brethren by the hand. You sisters, grab a sister by the hand. And I want you to pray that God would light up your brothers and sisters. I want you to pray that God would light up your brothers and sisters. Come on, we join hands together. And there is power in agreement. There is power in agreement. I want you to ask God to light your neighbor up. Come on, pray it. Come on, declare it. Come on, speak it. God, light my neighbor up today. Holy Ghost, breathe on them. Holy Ghost, use them. Holy Ghost, work in them. Do it tonight, Jesus. Do it tonight, Jesus. Let the light of the gospel burn Jesus burn pray for Michaela's mom and dad they're watching it live on the internet tonight they both been attacked in their bodies Wayne was a week ago and Jan was this last weekend they couldn't be here tonight I send healing in the name of Jesus I speak healing over your body I command the attacks of the enemy to leave and to flee I rebuke the enemy I rebuke the attacks I speak life, I speak miracles, I speak healing, I speak strength, I speak peace. And God, you confirm it tonight by the power that shows up in their house. And God, we give you glory for it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anybody in this house tonight before I change the service and give it back to pastor? Is there anybody in this house tonight you need God to do something special in your life tonight? Not in the morning, not Friday. You need God to do something in your life tonight. If you'll come and stand right here, I want to pray for you. 
I need me some helpers. I don't ever know when it's going to hit. You stay with me. You stay with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, standing in the place of her 12-year-old, God, I don't know what it needs, but you do. God, you see all things and know all things. So right now, God, under the faith of my sister right now, Father, let the healing power, let the healing power of Jesus, you said to ask anything. You said to ask anything in your name, and I will do it. God, right now, by the power, by the power of your name, work a miracle, work a miracle in the name of Jesus. When I heard it, before I heard it, answer the prayer of this lady, my sister. God, right now, tear down every wall, every bondage, every lie that Satan has used to keep him out. I call him back in the household of faith. I break every chain that the enemy has tried to put around his life. I break it in the blood of Jesus and the power of Jesus. God, open his ears that may, he may hear you and surrender to your will, O oh God. And we will praise you and honor you and thank you, Lord, for what you're doing right now in Jesus' Show mighty name. Jesus from the mouth. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We believe. Jesus is we believe. Therefore, we believe my Jesus God for my family I speak the holy name of Jesus shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness over
stay right there. I got to share it with you. Last week we was in Hornwall, Tennessee. Pastor shared with me sitting on the front row. Was a man and his wife was the second biggest drug dealer of that county. They got saved the week before I got there, but the Sunday I was there, they were getting baptized in water. Listen, he had a smile on his face that God put there. Have you seen it? Have you recognized it when God takes the the stuff off of them and he puts a smile on them that only God can give? Brother, it's coming on you. That same spirit, that, that same spirit that was in Jesus is going to get in you. It's going to live in you. It's going to operate in you. God, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth right now, go ahead and sing. Darkness over Jesus. them over there five at least five men five women at least we're gonna do that same song 
What we gonna do tonight is make a step of faith. Anybody wanna make a step of faith? Yeah. You can or you don't have to. It don't make no difference to me. I'm just telling you what I feel led to do. I just believe that God's about to cause a wow moment in this house. No, I don't know if you can handle handle it or not, but that's between you and God. I'm just going to obey God. You're going to come right down through here with your hands lifted up. And as you come down through here, I believe that God's going to honor your faith. And God's going to give you a wow moment. And there's going to be victory. And there's going to be peace. And there's going to be joy when you go through this tunnel. I want you to come from this side. Come from this side and go that way. Sing. And we're about to rejoice. Come on.
Hallelujah. <laughs> and the Lord told me to tell you, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. My brother, God's about to fill you up spiritually. Lift up your hands. Your hunger and your desire has touched the heart of God tonight. Come on, I'm telling you, God's about to take you to some secret places with Him. By the power of His Word, it always accomplishes what you send it to do. Let there be an infilling of spiritual hunger and thirsting for more of God than He's ever been in His life. Let the Word come alive to Him. Let the Spirit come alive in Him and work a work through Him that the world can see the light shining forth. Woo! Let them look at Him and see there is a God who lives and He lives in you. my brother <laughs> it's the one you seek after it's the one you long after it's the one your heart loves he's getting closer he's getting closer I speak Jesus Bishop my God yes Right where you are, won't you just lift up your hands with me toward the heavens to Him? Come on, can you do that right now with us? Come on. Let's worship the Lord together. Let's just call upon His name right now. Come on, right where you are. Let's take one minute right now and let's just have a moment right now with Him. Come on, His presence is here. Just allow it to sit down. Open your mouth up and just allow the Spirit of God. Come on, that's it. Come on. The fire of God just to pour down in this house. Come on, there's, there's wow moments for everybody in here. I told you at the beginning of the service, I said, what's, I said, there's miracles that have been happening in this house. I don't know what you need right now, but right here where you are, come on, you ought to just go ahead and receive it and just allow 
the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to touch you right here. That miracle, that miracle always doesn't come in healing. Sometimes it comes in deliverance. Some of you need deliverance. That the battles that you're fighting right now, you need to be delivered from. Amen. Whatever you need. There's miracles in the house right now, God. Some of you need saving. If you need saving, you need to say, hey, Lord, I need saved tonight. There's miracles in the house. There's blessings with your name on it. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, take 30 seconds. Here we go. Take 30 seconds. Come on. Let's take 30 seconds. Take 30 seconds. That's it. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There are people here tonight that have been filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with the fire of God. Never be the same again. In the name of Jesus. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen. 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 God is good. God is good. How many appreciate the ministry, the pastor, Philip Cody over here? Amen. I love, I love that old school feel, man. I, I love it. I love it. Amen. I love it. Amen. I, I told, uh, I told Brother Jim all. I said it's been a while since we've seen a prayer line. I said we used to do those faith exercises all the time. I love seeing them. I love bringing them back. Amen. I love being a part of it. Amen. How many did, you, did, did the Cody's back here bless y'all tonight? Amen. Amen. Always do a wonderful job. These guys are, all of y'all are part of the Bridge family. That's the way that we feel always. Amen. We're just thankful for y'all. Hey, listen. Listen real quick. This weekend's a special weekend, of course. Easter weekend. I ask you to go out. I ask you to invite somebody to come. We don't forget about Saturday, right? Saturday's going to be the egg hunt. Somebody tell me real quick time. 10.30. 10.30 right here. Let's go get some kids. Bring them here. We're going to have food. We're going to have stuff, games. Man, there's going to be a petting zoo. All this stuff's going to be here. Go get somebody. Hey, listen. Us adults, we like to hang out here too. Okay? We're going to eat some hot dogs too. All right? So it's all right for you to come and hang out and be a part. Okay, but Easter Sunday, come in ready. You're, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to hear an amazing testimony. Hey Amen. There's going to be some things that happen that morning. We're going to have some awesome music singing. It is going to be fresh. It's going to be a fresh word from heaven. It's going to be an awesome day, Easter. Get ready for it. Go tell somebody. Bring somebody with you. Go ahead and come expecting. Come on, somebody. We're about to celebrate. We are celebrating even tonight the victory that we have in Jesus through the resurrection of our Savior. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for coming tonight and being a part. Thanks for joining us today for this service. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you take this message with you throughout the week. Remember, follow us on all our social medias to keep updated on service time and special events going on at the church. Bye, everyone.